An Introductory Guide to Treatment Planning In this module, we'll be walking through some introductory guides to treatment planning with Eon aligners. Course outline will include brief discussion about the malocclusions that can be treated with Eon Clear Aligner, which are spacing, crowding, deep bite, open bite, cross bite narrow arches, class 2 malocclusions, and class 3 malocclusions. Treatment options for spacing. Treating spaces using aligners, whether mild, moderate, or severe, localized or generalized, can be achieved through the retraction of anterior teeth, constricting the posterior teeth, mesialization or distalization of teeth, or a combination of those movements. Your decision will, of course, be based on the severity of the case, Opening up the spaces or leaving it in certain areas in preparation for future restorative work is also an available option. Treating mild spacing cases is pretty straightforward and can be achieved using simple retraction of anteriors and or constriction of the posteriors. In more advanced cases, for example, moderate and severe cases, Options for mild spacing still applies with the addition of mesialization option to help maintain a good facial profile and maintaining or improving class 1 relationship. In the presence of a tooth size discrepancy, for example, peg-shaped lateral incisors, you can consider consolidating the spaces around the laterals for later restorative work. Some helpful key points to keep in mind while treating cases with spacing. When retracting anterior teeth to reduce spaces, it is helpful to include torque enhancers on their buccogingival aspect. These are very important to preserve the inclination of those teeth. Another point to be mindful of is that when moving teeth in mesio or distal direction, considering attachments is important to increase the predictability of the movement. Consider root control attachments when translating upper central incisors and vertical rectangular beveled attachments when translating the rest. Not every mesiodistal movement will require attachments. The need for such attachments largely depends on the amount of translational movement happening, as well as the space available around the teeth, with more space meaning more plastic wrapped around the teeth, so you're less likely to require attachments. Next, we're going to embark on the treatment planning for crowding cases. As we all know, crowding can be classified as mild, moderate, and severe. Determining the classification is essential in the treatment options available. In mild crowding spaces, the options available to provide space for crowded teeth are proclination of anterior teeth, expansion of the arch or arches posteriorly, and introducing interproximal reduction to provide the space that is not available or, of course, a combination of all. In moderate cases, we can use all of what we mentioned in the previous slide, in addition to considering extraction, for example, for lower anterior teeth. When treating severe crowding, options available can include all the options that are available to mild and moderate cases, IPR, expansion, Proclination, lower incisors extraction, in addition to planning extraction for bicuspid teeth depending on the space needed and considering the jaw relationships as well as the option of distalization. Now, moving on to discuss what are the treatment options for deep bite with Eon aligners. Before we decide how to treat deep bite, we of course need to understand the reason behind this vertical dental problem. It can result either from over-eruption of anterior teeth or infra-occlusion of posterior teeth. If the problem was over-eruption of anterior teeth, then treatment would be one of the following. Either maintain the deep bite and focus on aesthetic alignment only. Alternatively, if you choose to correct the deep bite, you can intrude the lower and or upper anterior teeth. If the problem was infra-occlusion of posterior teeth, then again, we can accept and maintain the deep bite and simply align the teeth or address it by extruding posterior teeth, possibly with the aid of auxiliaries. 
When you decide to treat deep bite with Eon aligners, it's very important to focus on increasing the predictability of intrusion, which is one of the movements that is more on the challenging side of the spectrum. But how? Eon recommends combining intrusion with synergistic movements like proclination. A second thing to consider is adding attachments on premolars and or first molars if possible because they are essential to counteract the extrusive forces exerted on anterior teeth when being intruded. And finally, attachments on canines are essential because incisors will usually get more intruded than canines. Therefore, attachments should be placed on canines to counteract any extrusive forces on them. Other points to take into consideration when treating deep bite cases is that when there is need to correct the inclination of retroclined upper incisors to help with the aesthetics and also its relative extrusion, consider using torque enhancers on the labial surfaces of these teeth to help with torquing them labially. Also, bite ramps. These are unfilled projections of the aligner placed on the lingual surface of the upper incisors and canines if possible. They work on deep bite by Unlocking posterior bite, which would help remove any bite forces if present, and also give room for any passive extrusion to happen through over-eruption, which will help open up the bite anteriorly. And applying intrusive forces on anterior teeth. Next up, we'll talk about how to plan treating open bite cases with Eon aligners. Our treatment plan will differ whether it was dental or a skeletal open bite. For dental open bites, this can be treated by either relative extrusion as shown in figure A, which occurs when teeth are being retracted, or through absolute extrusion as shown in figure B. Always keep in mind that if space is needed, IPR should be performed. For skeletal open bite cases, we can go for either camouflaging the skeletal discrepancy, or if the patient decides to surgically treat the problem, we could do pre-surgical alignment to prepare for the orthognathic surgery. Key points to consider when planning to resolve the open bite. Firstly, you can consider a combination of posterior intrusion and anterior extrusion because posterior intrusion will help with deepening the bite anteriorly, so it will contribute to closing up the bite. Secondly, if you plan to do posterior intrusion alone, then the use of temporary anchorage devices is recommended depending on the amount of intrusion desired. Thirdly, the use of attachments. This can't be stressed enough that extrusive attachments must be used when extruding anterior teeth. And lastly, consider overcorrecting anterior open bite to compensate for any lag that may happen. Next, we'll discuss how to treat crossbite and narrow arches. If you notice that the arches are narrow and there is no evident crossbite, then treatment options will include expanding both to get a fuller smile and decrease the large buccal corridor. But in the case of having a crossbite, have a closer look at the arches because you'll need to decide whether to expand one, constrict another, or perform a combination of both. An important point to highlight is that during expansion and or constriction of an arch, it is important to consider its inclination. To maintain posterior inclination, consider the following. Placement of horizontal rectangular attachments to counteract unwanted inclination and compensate the predicted unwanted inclination by planning an inclination to the other side in the treatment setup. Class II malocclusion can be treated in several ways using Eon aligners. We'll be talking about the four most common approaches to treat Class II malocclusion listing them according to predictability. The first option is maintaining the class II malocclusion and focus on aesthetic alignment, leaving an anterior overjet when your patient is not concerned about the overjet, nor is seeking to correct it. The second option is that you can leave the molars in class II and perform posterior interproximal reduction, distal of canine to molar, and approximate as needed to improve the canine relationship. The third option is extraction of the two upper bicuspids and or lower bicuspids. When seeking this option, consider using auxiliaries to aid the movements. And always remember that due to the long distance that the teeth need to travel, your patient may require fixed appliances towards the end of treatment. 
Finally, distalization of the upper posterior teeth can be used when planning to correct class 2 molar relationships. Distalization is preferably done with the help of auxiliaries and in sequential movements. Class 3 malocclusion treatment options with EON aligners include the following. Again, sorted according to predictability. Starting with the most predictable to least predictable, here are the treatment protocols you can follow to treat class 3 malocclusion. Firstly, accept the class 3 and focus on aesthetic alignment only. Secondly, lower retraction with interproximal reduction. Thirdly, lower retraction through extraction of lower bicuspids. And lastly, proclination and mesialization of upper arch to create a positive overjet and or retraction of the lower incisors. Thank you for watching.